Hello everyone, welcome to CBT Micro Nuggets on PowerPoint Animations. I'm Chris Ward, and in today's Micro Nugget, we're going to take a look at some of the secrets to really utilizing animation in PowerPoint in a way that benefits your presentation. All right, everybody out there, quick show of virtual hands. How many of you have sat through a PowerPoint presentation where during it, all these incredible things just fly out of nowhere and they bounce across the screen. And for the most part, you're just sitting there. Okay, great. The person found the animations uh, tab here on the, the ribbon and now they know how to use it, right? That's, that's the big thing that's going on here. Um, you know what? One of the things that I have found after doing thousands of these presentations over the years is that animation is great because it helps tell a story but you want to use it in a way that effectively almost with laser-like focus helps you tell that story as I like to say sometimes less is more you can be creative with it as in fact I'll show you a great creative way to do this but let's just show you the basics and then try to help you understand why you want to do things maybe in certain order and then even number one if you're new to this whole animation thing and you've always wondered how to do it correctly well we're gonna show you how to do that so the first thing obviously is I've got my uh, two slides that I have here for my Acme Musical Instruments Incorporated catalog update. If you've ever watched any of our CBT Nugget series in Office, you, you're very familiar with this company. I use it a lot. So we already know. We can click over here on animations. Now one of the things that I always tell people when you're putting together your animations is make sure that all of the material, all of your elements that are going to be animated, you've already put on the slide and approximately where you want everything to be so that way when you have it come in or go out and then move eventually you know at least a benchmark position of where things are okay that's step number one now the first thing that we're gonna do is obviously select the first element that I want I wanna tell a story about introducing tubas so I come in here and I click on the element first or the object which is gonna be the tuba that's the first thing that I want to uh, appear you know introducing tubas awesome okay so I'm gonna go ahead and do that now I go over here now you can do it one of two ways you of course have your pre-built animations that are set up here of course with real-time preview you can see how everything works in and of course your mileage may vary but again I like things that are not so super sudden unless you want to surprise somebody unless you really want to shock somebody you know not give them a heart attack but at least go wow well that kind of really caught my attention I like things to be subtle and move in a way that doesn't jar the viewer as they go through so that's my th my thing everybody mileage may vary now we'll go ahead and we can click on add animation now when you do add animation you of course can see everything that's up here on your animation quick style bar or you can scroll down here and click on my favorite thing click on more entrance effects and what that does is it gives you a separate dialog box that you can then move so that way when you want to uh, preview something um, you can say well I want it to look like a checkerboard what does that look like oh okay I can see that as long as you have this preview effect chosen in this case I'm a big fan of the float now floating if you notice I'm introducing tubas I'm trying to tell a story so I'm gonna introduce tubas and it literally I want it to come down float down out of my introducing tubas so the first thing I want to do is click on float down and so now you'll notice it comes and it floats down exactly like that so I go ahead and I click OK and now you'll notice on your screen here I've got my first element that has an animation remember this is your clue when you click on a slide no animations aha I see there's an animation set up right here for this the other way to do this to make sure you have animations is click on the animation pane it appears over here one of your old task panes that we had in the old versions of office and in this case this one actually has a animation or an animation this one does not so when you click on the appropriate slide it'll tell you whether you have animations in place just a little quick tip there for you okay the next thing I'm gonna want to do to tell my story is I want obviously this picture to move out of the way so that way my text my bullet points that I want to uh, show will appear so in this case we're gonna say popular request from clients I've already got it in elements so I'm gonna um, select on this first because I want this to move first then I want this to appear so the next step that we're going to do is I want to have this move so I go ahead and add an animation do a motion path and one of them is going to be move to the right so if I click on move to the right it'll go ahead and move to the right now of course I'm gonna to need to make some adjust adjustments to that but that's fine so we click on move to the right 
And notice I've got my arrow showing the motions where it stops. In this case, I'm going to grab that anchor point and move it over just a little bit more. I can click play. It'll show me exactly how that's going to work. Perfect. It leaves me plenty of space there. So that's accurate. Now notice though, this thing happens immediately um, afterwards or on a click. So right now, if you want to change the way that it appears, I select it and say I want it to start on a click. Okay, that's great. So in other words, the slide will come up. It'll just say introducing tubas. I click and it appears down. Or I can just say um, on this, I want to go ahead and just start with the previous or start after the previous. You can have this do any any one of those. We'll start on the click. That works the best. Now I want to wait before I want things to start moving. So I want to go ahead and make sure this also starts on a click. So I can click on the mouse. What's the next element that needs to appear? Well, it's going to be this, right, or text. So I click on this, and I like to just have text fade in. The best way to do it. Having text bounce, it makes it hard for people to read, and they kind of get a little distracted. So we're going to go ahead and just have it fade on in. So I click on that, click fade, and now it's going to appear. Now notice it says 3. That means it's going to wait. Instead, I want it to do it at the same time that the tuba is moving. How do you do that? Start it with the previous. So that way, now when I play this and it goes down and then watch, boom, it fades in and it comes across. So we can do that at the same time. There you go. Or you could have this go across and then that fades in. Then after that, what I'm going to want to do is have Antonio Stradivarius appear. So I click on that element right there. I then want to add another animation. So what do we want to do? Maybe something a little bit different something a little bit more fun. So we'll do more entrance effects. We come over here and let's say we want to do a center revolve. That's a, that's kind of a fun one. Just kind of bloop, kind of perps in right there. Sounds good. Then we click OK. That's now happened. And then after a little bit, I want this one to happen. And so I'll make that my fourth and final one. And that is going to just have it fade in. OK, so we go ahead and just have it fade in. Boom. Click on it, and now it's set up. So here's an example of what all these things will look like. Now, again, if you need to make a change or if anything needs to happen, select on any one of these animations and then select the down arrow. You can make some changes here or effect options. Effect options will say for a center revolve, do you want a sound to play? You can have that happen. Do you want the timing to start on a click? Do you want a delay? Now this is where it's important to happen. Now remember how we came over here. Let me click on over here. Remember this one was starting to fade in right as this started to move? Well, I'm going to go ahead and come over here, click on Effect Options, click on Timing, all right? And I'm going to go ahead and say, what is the uh, delay? Well, I want it to delay for about two seconds, which allows this to move, and then just make this about one second, which is fast. We can do that, OK? So we click on that. And now what we can do is, you know, see how fast that moves. So if I play all these together, this happens, that happens, this comes in, that guy comes in, and that guy comes in. Now let's see how it actually happened in a real slide. Real quick, we go ahead and come over here to my slideshow. Let's go ahead and play it from the current slide. And of course it fills my screen here. I click once, there is my tuba. I click again, it moves. Here comes my text. I click again, and Antonio Stradivarius comes in. I click one more time, and boom, it's done. So there you go, some quick steps on how to set up my animations. Now, to really give you an idea of how deep this can go, real quick, let me show you another uh, one of our uh, um, one that we have here. This one has, look at this on my animation slide, look at how many pictures here. You've got almost 50 pick four pictures that are all set in place and they all do something. They all have motion. They all appear. I've got two different elements that appear at different times. Now if I play this and preview it, watch what all this work does for us. You can see the guy clicks on it, boom, and it goes there. Pretty cool. So take this to whatever level you want. Notice this was a very complex animation, but yet it has a simple story about how you are going to put together a, a really neat little piece of artwork or something like that. I hope this has been informative for you, and I'd like to thank you for joining me.